Hello, my name is Dick Wagner. I've been a volunteer with the Coos History Museum uh, since uh, the opening of the new building in 1915. <laughs> Excuse me, in 2015. <laughs> Hello, my name is Becky Souls, and I'm a volunteer at the Coos History Museum. Hello, my name is Steve Greif. I'm a volunteer at the Coos History Museum. Hey, hello folks, I'm uh, John Engels, twice retired, <laughs> yeah, volunteer at the Coos History Museum. My name is Carol, and I'm a volunteer at the Coos History Museum. Hi there, my name is Bill Mast. I'm a volunteer here at the museum. I've been volunteering since 2015 when the museum first, new museum first opened. Oh. Hi, my name is Ann Collins and I'm a volunteer here at the Coos History Museum. Hello, my name is Richard Boer. I've been a volunteer at the museum for about three years, I think. Hello, I am Ann Guerin. I live in Langlois, Oregon and have been a relatively long-term volunteer at the Coos History Museum. Hello, my name's Dean, and I'm the Thursday afternoon person working at the museum. Hi, my name is Barb Cribb, and I am a volunteer at the Coos History Museum. I've been volunteering for over four years now, so I love it. A little bit of everything. Well, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> So, I have been a volunteer, I feel like since the beginning of time, maybe since 1983 I started. Um, I started on the board back then. Right now I am working as a front desk and store volunteer on Saturdays from 12 to 4. I work at the front desk and I uh, give introductions to our museum, to our guests. You know, we run the um, gift shop and um, just make people feel welcome and comfortable in our space. Uh, I'm a front desk person, uh, welcoming uh, those who come to the museum. And prior to COVID, uh, we would give a walk through the uh, entry hallways, explaining the map, talking about uh, various sundry objects. Um, I volunteer at the front desk on Thursdays now. Um, take a shift there. I volunteer with the education program with fourth grade. I give tours every now and then, uh, walking tours from the museum. I've helped with exhibits. And right now I'm having a lot of fun in the research room answering research requests. I, I believe I joined in 2008 and almost immediately became the secretary, probably by default because nobody else wanted, nobody said, oh, choose me, choose me. <laughs> and I also was lured into a second job very time consuming, but also very fun, of editing the quarterly newsletter for the museum called The Waterways. Well, the last uh, four years, I've been working with fellow board member Ann here, and we, uh, we organize a, a summer tour every year of some of the outlying areas, and that's been a lot of fun. And I, hope, I hope people enjoy them. They keep signing up for them. I started off, you know, being customer service down in the lobby and then was interested in research part in the upstairs so since being up there you know I've worked on some different exhibits developing exhibits and setting up the exhibits and the research requests and um, a couple of articles in the waterways and some different things like that. I've written uh, hundreds of descriptions of objects. Uh, Steve and I have been five years working one day a week at the front desk downstairs. I grew up in the Coos Bay area, so the Coos Historical Society has been a part of my life since I was a little girl, just studying history in high school and becoming involved with the Marshall Pioneer Cemetery. And I've been fortunate to be an intern at the museum both when before the museum moved to its new facility, and then now as I'm between jobs, to have an opportunity to be a volunteer here and help out with a grant-based project. Oh, my favorite thing about this museum 
Oh, wow, my favorite thing about the museum. Oh, goodness. Um, the people here are outstanding, you know, the staff, the volunteers. I enjoy just, just being here and having other people to work with. Since my cat died, I'm just talking to the walls at home, and it's nice to be out with people. <laughs> I am immersed in that agriculture culture, and I enjoy coming to the museum and being associated with people who are non-ag people. And it's, it, it's sort of a blossoming part of my life. I think it's all the people that I've met since I became a volunteer here. I just formed a whole new set of friendships with the other volunteers and with the staff that we've had. Um, I think back to 1999 when I joined and there's at least a hundred people now that I didn't know then. Just the camaraderie and working here, giving me something to do. <laughs> and I like the discount. Well, there's just too many favorites to uh, mention, but I love the building. The new building is just amazing and it's Proximity to the bay and the activity going on in the bay is wonderful to see. Besides this incredible location, is um, just having the space to exhibit some of our collections in a way that is not just entertaining but informative. It's been really exciting for me to come back to the museum and see how it's changed. Um, I'm much more familiar with the old museum before it moved out of Simpson Park. So to me, it's been so fascinating to walk into a building that has air conditioning and lots of space. You know, the other part that I really liked is the, doing the displays and the, the research. So just the ability, you know, as a volunteer to do those kinds of things. The social things we do, the the uh, fundraising activities, the, uh, the first Tuesday talks, and I really have enjoyed the classes I've been able to teach here at the museum. That's another volunteer thing I do. <laughs> My favorite thing about the museum is hard to pinpoint because I, I learned so much. I've lived here for over 40 years, but I'm not a native, and there was so much I did not know. And really, um, doing helping with research. I was in the company of Steve Greif and John Littlefield, who are super researchers. I think my favorite thing about the museum is the uh, historical uh, references to uh, North Bend, because I'm a North Bend person, and so when I see Asa and Louis Simpson's pictures and stories of what has gone on in the past there, then I feel very at home. Uh, I grew up here, this is my hometown, and just reminiscing about the, the uh, logging and the shipping and, you know, just remembering everything and sharing that with our guests. I love that. And I also like the energy in the museum, even um, on the days that it's closed, it seems to be a real, a kind of positive place to be. Oh, yeah, why not? There's been so many things that have happened, uh, some of them I wouldn't even repeat. Give me a little example that was so much fun. No, I did, I did a presentation on Cape Arago Lighthouse for one of the first Tuesday things. And it was kind of fun because there was, a, you know, one of the keepers out there who uh, was on the tram with his daughter and some other people on the tram broke. And the guy, they all fell down into the, uh, the gap there between the island and the mainland. Nobody was hurt real bad except for the, the keeper who uh, lost his leg. And it was the same leg that he'd been injured in the Civil War. Uh, but he, he kept being the lighthouse keeper for another nine years. Well, after the presentation, a young lady came up to me with a, with a three-ring binder and said, that's my great-grandfather. <laughs> it was fun one day when a young woman came in and said that several years ago, her father had donated some lanterns part of the life-saving service here, and she wondered if we still had them and all about them. Well, they were right there in a case in the welcome as part of a lifeguard. 
uh, life saving service exhibit, and that was, she was so thrilled, and so I was thrilled that um, they were here, and she got to see how valuable his donation had, had been. We have in our um, back uh, parking lot, we have um, the boat called the Welcome, and it's one of the um, original old milk boats that went up Coos River every morning and every evening. And one afternoon we had some guests in here and there was an elderly lady in the group. And I'm giving my spiel on the history of the boat. And all of a sudden she just looked at me and she goes, well, I went to, I went to school on that boat. <laughs> and it was, I was shocked. It's like, oh my gosh. But anyway, it was just very sweet. And for her to have that memory uh, pop into her head while I was talking was just really, really fun. I loved it. Um, another special moment that comes to mind. Uh, the exhibit that we have now in the mezzanine, the A to Z, one of the pieces in there is a red and white quilt. And that quilt was so is is so meaningful to me because it has the names of dozens and dozens of people from Myrtle Point, families whose whose uh, who ancestors of families that I grew up with. And when Joan Greif came, grabbed me by the sleeve and said, "I have something special to show you," and she took me to that quilt. I just melted. It was just so special. My father, my grandfather, my great uncle, all these people that I knew, their names were there, and it, it's a treasure. At the old museum, I one of my vivid memories is the day that that big giant slab of Douglas fir. It's now on display downstairs. Was delivered to the old museum. It was too heavy to pick up, and it was too big to get through the door. We had to take both front doors off the hinges, and we had just enough width to slide it into the old building. And then we had to walk over it and climb over it and walk around it for <laughs> seemed like several months before we moved to the new building. Very interesting stuff. I used to live out by Simpson Park and we'd go over to the old museum and I'd take my daughter over there and she'd always pick up a rock and give it to him and say here's an exhibit for you and I always thought it was cool that they would take the rock. <laughs> I don't know what they ever did with it. But. You know I guess the, the biggest thing that always stands out in my mind is I, I live across the bridge, the North Bend Bridge, so uh, when I go to work, I had to pass the museum, and of course passed it again going home. And as a board member, I used to just stop in occasionally to chat with Ann Copey, our hardworking and um, underpaid uh, uh, museum person who essentially ran the whole place with her um, elderly mother and elderly aunt as her only two volunteers. So I'd stop in there just to see what was happening and normally it was kind of a litany of problems, mostly financial problems, not having enough people to help out. I managed to keep the utilities on and pay in. I think our total budget for the year was under 25000 for everything. And um, at the time, one of the other board members was in there and um, he called me into um, into the back of the building and said, I got something to tell you. Uh, when he told me this, it was just kind of mind blowing and all of a sudden the day didn't seem so bad. So, as you know, from there, it was like magic all of a sudden from the dark depressing days of just trying to keep the lights on to maybe actually having a future for the building and collection. Knowing that we are preserving this for the future is exciting to me. Um, it, I get nervous about what is lost every day that we're not saving. So um, just the fact that people walk into the door with tremendous stuff or with stories. I've also just really enjoyed the, the look on a fourth grader's face when I can tell them something about local history. And, um, it's nice to know that it's being passed on to the next generation.
Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Did I like to ask? Yeah.